Our today's topic is heliograph. Hi, I'm Shweta Mundi and I will be doing the introduction of this topic, heliograph. I remember my grandmother telling me that it will take 15 to 13 days for a letter to come from Bombay to Goa. During olden times, there weren't many options for communications and options for communications were very limited and heliograph was one of the effective way of communication. Heliograph comes from a Greek word helios means sun and graphis means to write. Heliograph is a semaphore system that uses fa flashes of sunlight to reflect in the mirror, generally using it as a Morse code. It was extensively used during 19th and 20th century. It played a very important role during both the world wars. It was used by British and Australian armies during 1960s and by Brit and by Pakistani army till 1975. We might not use heliograph nowadays because of advanced communication systems, but it still has a very important significance in history and will always remain a effective way of communication in past, present and in future. Working of heliography. The heliography, a major instrument that could bring messages across great distance, was the latest in military communication technology, and this was the first time it had been used in a conflict. Millennia fire and smoke were the only means human had for long range communication. At some point in history, someone hit on the idea of using flag. Century later, signaling by reflecting the sun rays off a shiny surface came into practice, though. Historian cannot agree on when or where this first happened. Heliograph is a mirror mounted on a suitable stand with adjustments in order to revolve and incline it so that the sun rays can be reflected with ease and precision at any required direction. A standard man's mirror was 5 inch round of thick plate glass carefully silvered on one side. A small, unsilvered hole in the center was used in conjunction with a sighting rod to aligen the instrument with a distant station. There were two critical requisites for working of heliography. First and the foremost was the sun, though it worked well in the moonlight but it was not okay in cloud. The second was the placement of transmitting station on a direct line of sight. The distance between station wasn't critical. The separation could be 40 or 50 miles. Setup was quick and easy, and signaling could commence between two stations or many more. In order to make a flash, a finger key was depressed, causing the aimed mirror to pivot on its vertical axis just enough to deflect the deflection, which then disappeared from the distant receiver's view. A short flash denoted a dot, and a long one, a dash. A good team of heliographers could send Morse messages at 12 to 15 words a minute. In those early times, the meaning of a reflector signal was limited to an agreed upon code. As an example, two flashes might mean enemy sighted on your left flank and three right flank. Because consistency and regularity of sunshine were important, the heliograph was never widely used throughout the armies of continental Europe. So first we will talk about the changes in the design of heliographs. Most heliographs of the 19th and 20th century were completely manual. One notable exception though, many French heliographs used clockwork heliostats which look something like this to automatically steer out of the sun's motion. By 1884, all active units of the Manzan apparatus were equipped with clockwork heliostats. The Manzan apparatus with heliostat was still in service in 1917. Proposals to automate both the modulation of the sunbeam and the detection date back to at least 1882. In 1961, the US Air Force was working on a space heliograph to signal between satellites. The first digitally controlled heliograph was designed and built in 2015. It was a semi-finalist in the Broadcom Masters competition. Now we move on to the limitations of heliographs. 
there are a number of disadvantages to the heliograph as a communication device. The first is that it is limited to daytime use in lines of sight only, and if there is a cloud cover, it can interfere with the operation of the device. The transmission can also be intercepted by anyone who happens to be viewing. This in turn requires maintenance and updating of codes so that enemies cannot crack the code and read intercepted messages.